Look nice. Look at my hair. Look at my hair. Look at my hair. No, 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 no. Look at my hair. Look at my hair. Hindi. Ano, manunood siya. Manunood yung sa akin. Oo. Manunood yung cellphone mo. Pati ito panood mo ha. <laughs> Hi, Michael Francis Gertirio. <laughs> oh, napapanood na ba ako? Kuya, yung electric one doon mainit. Huwag na ito ilayo mo yan. Kumadalaw, no? Panoorin mo kailangan o ano ka. Pati yung kay Troy, kuya. Pati yung sa'yo. Gusto mo, nagdolo ko. Oo nga eh, hindi ko maintindihan. Yung electric fan. Hello, Ariel. Altis. Student kita ngayon. Ay, napapanood na. So, we are going to wait for the others. For me to start our lecture. Kasi wala tayong klase kanina. Kaya electric fan dun, dun, dun. Hi, Ricky. Good evening. Oy, salamat, EJ. Present ka na. Ayan na sila. Yeah, hey, may klase na ako. Mm, hindi ko alam problema ng camera. Kuya, gumagalaw. Laging ganyan. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Hello, Emi. Shout out, Emi Curativo. Diyos kong aking mga alaga at alaga nila ako. Hello, Aunt Tricia. Kalidad. Kuyang init. Sabi kong kulit mo pala, kuya. Eh. Saka yung gripo doon. Sorry, ah. Pag mo lakasan, nililipad yung mga... Yung mga ano ko. Sisimula na pa ba? Paola J. Mukesa. Hello. Hill Conception. Good evening. Ayan, mga anak. Ready na ba kayo? Wala tayong klase kami na remember. Kaya gumawa ko ng paraan para makapag-klase tayo. Okay? pa in Yeah, kasi mag in kayo. Bago itong mga... Hello, Henry. Mag-shoutout muna tayo sa mga present. Oh, Aaron Paul. Hello, good evening. Ayokong kumain. Sino pa ba yan? Jana Marie Kiambaw. Hello. Ayan, may mga kodigo ako kasi ang dami kong binasa para lang i-share sa inyo. Sana makinig kayo ha. And you tell me kung may problema. Babagalan ko lang. Good evening, Bianca. Then, if you have any questions pertaining to my discussion for tonight, please, you can also chat me. Vanessa Alvarez, hello. Wendy Palacio. Wendy... Second year ka ba, Wendy? Okay. Sit in lang din po ako, ma'am. Okay, sige. Sit in lang pwede, Ariel. Ri Ri Rian late Trinidad. Hello, good evening. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my channel is called Mami Yo and Her World simply because I'm into so many things. I want to share anything but not everything. Specifically, everything about history, people, music, friendship, maybe love, ano pa ba? Um, religion, mm -hmm. what tayo doon. So, um, pwede din everything about me being a prof. So, anything under the sun. Kasi di ba sabi ko sa inyo, tourism is all about the world. Ayan. Kaya, um, ang title ng channel ko, Mamiyo and Her World. So, but basically, at this period, at this point in time, I will be focusing much on my subject pertaining about tourism, geography, history, and tourist destinations para makatulong sa mga estudyante nating naka-online ngayon. Tapos pala, isa shout out ko yung isang estudyante natin. Um, I forgot the name, pero estudyante ko siya. Tulungan natin. Alam mo yung natira sa bahay nila, parang aparador, tapos 
nakita ko yung world map, buhay pa, pero yung bubong nila hindi na. Ah, nag-post ako sa Facebook kung saan pwede siyang tulungan. Financially, kailangan niya. Kawawa, wala silang bahay, wala silang magtuluyan. Kaya tulungan po natin. Okay, pa-plug. Uh, pa-plug naman po. Ayan, yeah, event daw ng uh, Phil Towa, last day tomorrow. First digital bucket list travel and tour exchange co-presented by Phil Towa and Tourism Promotions Board. Okay. Oh, tapos sino pa? Good evening, Mariette. Ay, ba't nandiyan ka? Ah, <laughs> ah, kasi nag, ano sa inyo? Kasi ang in-invite ko, three sections lang muna. Pero sige, nandyan din naman kayo. Okay. So, um, panoorin nyo yung Phil Towa uh, uh, Digital Bucket List Travel and Tour. Um, malaking bagay, lalo na sa mga first year. Pa, kaya lang, parang wala akong first year ngayon. Um, merong Phil Towa Facebook page Phil Towa Sinare ko ata yun O isishare ko pag hindi Last day kailan? Kailan ang last day anak? Um, tomorrow? Oo, sige share ko mamaya after this discussion Okay So tonight's topic is all about Europe Kasi sa lesson natin di ba, After we discuss everything about The uh, climate and the uh, geography of uh, the world. This time, what we're going to focus is for every continent, we're going to focus about what happened to them, okay? And I will be introducing to you the tourism geography of Europe. So in, in this discussion, we will identify the what? The cultural features of Europe and the stages in cultural development from prehistoric to present time. So you'll be surprised surprised that marami kayong talagang uh, matututunan at malalaman dahil wow, ganun kalaki at ganun kadami na ang nangyari sa continent ng Europe. That's why for the so many years, Europe has been the favorite destination of all travelers in the world. But we will not know after this pandemic what will be some changes, okay? So, uh, recently, may mga ibang changes na nangyari. If in the past, really, the focus of the tourist mainly is to go to European countries and the U.S., um, little is known about South America and Africa. Now, because of technology and mass communication, they really, most of the tourists were really surprised of the, uh, the so many new or novelty. Ito yung mga underrated attractions na talagang kakaiba, ang ganda, pati ang kultura ay kamangha-mangha sa mga ibang turista. Kaya nga, uh, they look forward to go to these continents na, especially when they have found out that there, there is Machu Picchu, you know? Uh, kaya nung mga early, 19, uh, early 2000, ito po yung top of the, the world, okay? South America and some uh, countries in Africa. Okay, so let's start. Ayan. How do I start? Okay, meron akong pin repair, kaya lang hindi nyo makikita. I'm so newbie talaga, hindi ko alam kung paano gamitin yung Ah, uh, sana may magturo sa akin kung pa- paano ako makakapag-present ng PowerPoint sa dito sa sa live streaming. Okay, so let's start. So, how do we start the European continent? Of course, dapat alam natin kung nasa ng Europe. <laughs> okay? So, Europe is the uh one of the smallest continents in the world, but it's so big in terms of what history and culture and places to visit right so europe for so many people and so many um a group and organization divided it according to how they would want to divide it say for example for the national geographic um apat lang yung division ng europe for them so they have the northern europe which comprises of scandinavia okay so of course you know what are the countries of Scandinavia? Yung ibang bahagi ng Russia kasama din dito. 
Okay. And then we have the the southern Europe, which comprises, of course, of those countries such as Greece and Italy and other. So may mention ko na lang yung madali niyo matandaan. Pero syempre, hindi lang yun yung dalawa. And then we have the western Europe. And dito po in the British Isles, kasama din yung France. Okay. And then we have the Eastern Europe. Ito nga yung tinatawag na Eastern Bloc o yung dati, uh, tinawag siyang Iron Countries, the Iron Countries. Bakit Iron? Kasi most of these countries in the Eastern Europe um, was under the uh, socialist form of government. Okay? So, bahag dahil sa Russia yun. But then in 1989, after Russia somehow or the union of soviet socialist republic um parang nag ano na siya inakap niya na yung ibang pulisiya ng west so nagka nagka separate yung mga under niya ng ng rule niya and so wala nang iron curtain i mean iron curtain countries okay so nandiyan pa ba kayo Smack si us, pa-shout naman daw. And then of course, we have the Central Europe. Nandito po yung malaking bansa ng Germany na kinatakutan ng Second World War. Alam nyo naman kung bakit, di ba? Next time, pwede ko gamitin yung OBS. Okay, so gamitin ko. Hindi ko alam eh. <laughs> Sige. So sana nandiyan pa rin kayo ah. So kasama kasi to sa... Uh, sa lesson talaga natin class kaya lang wala tayong pasok ang imagine, kala ko tuloy-tuloy lang pero dahil may bagyo kahit nasa bahay na wala pa rin palang pasok okay, because of the internet connection good evening Dasha okay, so let's talk about the timeline for the European history para lang may idea kayo kasi sinasabi nila di ba na Um, Europe is the cradle of the ancient civilization, pero sinasabi din nila na, na it's not Europe, it's Africa. Okay, so they are disputing one another. But uh, to uh, to learn more about how Europe started and what was the legacy that these earliest people left behind, which now are included in uh, as part of the tourist attractions and destinations. Imagine, imagine mo, so mga parang panahong panang kung mga, mga tao na nakatira sa kweba, may iniwan na silang something para sa mga present day people to to know, to learn, and to see that somehow may naganap na. Dan, Danny Villaroel. Okay, good evening. Are you listening? Please listen. Okay, so time scale. So 20,000 BP or before the present. Matagal yon. So what were the major developments that happened? So we have the culmination of the Paleolithic hunting culture. So people during those times were basically hunters. So where do they live? Inside the caves. So what are some of the cultural features that they left behind? Dalawa. Dalawang napakatinding heritage ang iniwan ng dalawang grupo ng mga sinako ng tao sa Europe. Okay? One is where you can find in Altamira, Spain. Okay? That is on the northern part of Spain. And the other one is in Lasco, France. Ano yung nakita doon? Sa Altamira, Spain, parang it dated something like mga 32,000 before the present. Okay? And uh, so it's a cave near the Cantabria, Spain. So these are these two, which I told you, are famous for their cave paintings. Who painted? Of course, the earliest people, those uh, cavemen. Okay. Um, if you are going to research more of this, you will be amazed. Wow, as early as twenty thousand before the present. People has this skill, has this talent. No wonder some of the greatest painters in the planet Earth can be found in Europe, right? Okay, and dami lang nagkalat yan. Meron pa lang pinaghubutan yung mga to. Anyway, so what are those paintings that you can find inside Altamira? So anong ginamit nila? Charcoal. So most uh, 
parang these are more more on charcoal paintings of the bisons okay and uh some floras and fauna okay kung ano na sa paligid niyo na and then the other one in France in Dordon plus co eh ay dito pala yung mga bison paintings okay so how old are these uh cultural features so these are something like 35,000 to 11,000 BC Hmm, na ano nyo ba sa isip nyo? Kung gaano katanda. So, it has been there several thousands of years ago. And because it's one of the most important cultural heritages that the ancient people left behind, of course, it is being taken care of by the government. Altamira in Spain and then, of course, Lascaux in France. Okay, and then in 10,000... BP before the present, uh, then the it happened at the the end of the last ice age happened, and then we have of course here in 5000 BP, ito na po nagkaroon ng introduction of agriculture and then that later metal working during the Bronze Age. All right. So ano naman ang iniwan ng mga taong sinauna ng 50,000 BC? Well, are you familiar with the Minoan civilization in Greece, in the island of Crete? Okay, so they had started the earliest civilization, which is called Minoan. And accordingly, this is considered to be the earliest civilization founded in the European continent. So if you are familiar with King Minos and all, so paano nalaman ang mga tao? Well, when they went to Crete, they found the remnants of the palace of Knossos. Okay, so parang yun ang pinagbasihan nila na, wow, um, napakatanda, thousands of years, pero may ganitong parang malapalasyong bahay nung sinauna. So parang iisipin mong they were very ahead of their time, okay, even when they somehow uh, made a, a drawing of this palace, it would tell you the parang may kwarto, merong the house has or the palace has division. Okay? Parang talagang parang modern day civilization yun. Kaya they were telling us, the history is telling us that mm, binasa ko si Mark. The history is telling us that really it could be Europe which is the cradle of the modern civilization of the planet Earth. Okay? Imagine mo, uh, when did that happen, 50,000 BP? Tapos anong nangyayari on the other side of the world? For example, sa Filipinas, meron ang nangyayari dito, may mga palasyo na sila, may mga hari na. Anong klase mga nila lang nasa Pilipinas? Diba? So nakatira pa rin sa kweba, pero sila lumabas na ng kweba. <laughs> may palasyo na sila. And, and aside from that, if uh, you are going to other part of, the, of Europe, then they, the archaeology somehow found that the Stonehenge. Are you familiar with the Stonehenge class? Okay, and the Scarab Rare. Okay, meron ding New Grange and the Talayots. Ano yung Stonehenge? Baka naman hanggang ngayon meron pang hindi nakakaalam kung ano yung Stonehenge. So these are prehistoric monuments in England. So, these are the Ring of Standing Stone. Alam niyo kung gaano kataas. 13 feet high, 7 feet wide, and 25 tons. Ang bigat nun. So, it is in circle. Uh, wonders of all wonders. Uh, the archaeologists really are wondering, saan galing yung mga bato? Dahil hindi naman talaga nakitaan ng ganong klaseng bato yung part na yun ng England. And then, nung hinukay nila, it was found out that it has been used as a burial chamber during the ancient times. Okay? And wonders of wonders na naman, ang mga nakatir, nakalibing doon ay hindi taga-England. Okay? Nung chinet nila, I don't know how they check it, but then according to the, the research, um, galing din sa Wales yung mga unang naka- living doon sa Stonehenge. Okay, so they were saying that 
um, it it is also used in astronomy by the ancient people, and especially uh, when we talk about the winter solstice, okay. And then during summer, people gather together here to welcome the sun rays, okay. And so still, it remains a mystery to the present day people, right? Because how can you be able to carry those stones, which um, weighs 25, 000, 25 tons? Ang bigat po nun, hindi po kilo ang pinag-uusapan natin, tons and tons. Anong, anong material ang ginamit? Anong equipment ang ginamit for them to be able to bring those stones in that part of England at pinabilog pa? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Another one is the scarabray. Scarabray. Uh, scara. S K A R A. Sorry, oh, wala talagang ano. And bray. Saan nakikita to? Ito ay nakikita naman sa Scotland. O magkadikit na yan, di ba? Sa Scotland. Ibig kong sabihin baga, parang sa, sa research ko, parang wow, as early as those times, itong bahaging ito ng Europe, especially England, may mga sinaunang tao na gumagawa na rin talaga ng kanilang sariling bahay at ng community. Kasi itong Scarabir, for the longest time, hindi alam ng mga English people and Scottish people na lubog ito sa buhangin dahil ang location nito malapit sa karagatan. Okay? Nung isang malakas na bagyo, noong 1800s, inilabas nito yung bahagi ng community gawa sa bato, napakatibay, uh, bilog, wala, wala siyang division. Okay, and they were able to identify that really a group of people happened to live in here during those years na sinasabing kailan ito, uh, 22,000 BC. So, those that I mentioned to you are now some of the favorite places of other tourists all over the world would like to see and to visit. Ikaw ba bakit mong gusto puntahan yung mga ganong katatanda ng mga, di ba, mga legacies na iniwan? Kasi nga, di ba, you will be wondering how they were able to do that, okay? When was the time? How they live, how they work, how they play, what they eat? Okay, paano sila nabuhay? Na, san, bakit nawala? Saan sila napunta? But, walang nakapagsabi, this is prehistoric, right? Pero may naiwan silang ebidensya na tumira kami dito once upon a time. Okay? Sino ba yung mga tumira dyan? Sila Flintstones? We never really knew kasi wala naman talagang nasulat. Okay, so, other places of interest is one is in Ireland. We have the New Grange. Ito naman, libingan din nila. This is as old or much older than the pyramids of Egypt accordingly. Wow. Diba? Pyramids of Egypt. Gano'n ba katanda ang pyramids of Egypt? 2,000 years old or more than that. These are done by the people. Okay. Now, in 3,000 3, BC, then started the Iron Age and the rise of the classical Greece. This is one of the uh, parang paborito kong pag-usapan, the classical Greece. So, uh, what are the specifics or some of the legacies that the earliest people left behind during the 3000 BC? Uh, they have here the one in the Maiden Castle in the Mediterranean. This is also very old. And then if you get to Greece, of course, you get to see the Acropolis in Athens. Right. So who can tell me about what the Acropolis is? How old is the Acropolis? Okay, Acropolis is so old that it has been there uh, for the longest time and uh, it was used as a temple to worship goddess Athena. Okay. So, uh, So in the Acropolis is where you can find, of course, Athens is the capital of Greece. That was the center of Greek civilization during the ancient past. And then the highest elevated city of Athens is Acropolis, where they put several monuments such as the Parthenon, okay, sabi ko nga, which is the temple for Athena. 
Okay, and uh, during those era, uh, Greece gave us so many things. Okay, what are those? So in 447 BC, Athens is at the height of the glory. Okay, this is the time when Athens uh, was the most very important um, cities in that part of Greece. And uh, because of that, it was able to build several very important um, buildings such as one in Ngayong Parthenon. And then we have also, if you are familiar with the Temple of Hira, gano katatanda na yon. I am not saying that these are still, uh, no, ha, buo. Hindi, nasa tagal ng panahon sila na yan. And then if you are familiar with the great uh, theater of the Epidaurus, so this is a huge theater which can occupy 13 to 16,000 uh, people. Well, uh, Greeks love drama, love musical, love everything about performances. That's why all over Greece and other places which is very near it, you would find such um, theater, okay? So what else is in there? So basically you are all familiar with the Olympic Games, right? 776 BC, the very first Olympic Games happened to be in Greece. Dito natin hinugot yung Olympic Games sa ngayon. Okay. So, what happened then? And then, 7, 750 BC, ayan na nga, the start of building Greek cities. So, yung word na polis, galing yan sa Greece, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng metropolis. All over Greece, they built several cities. Ganon sila Kalala when it comes to, ang taba ng utak dahil nga sabi ko sa inyo, that is 750 BC. Okay, 594, Athens has a new constitution. Imagine ha, meron ng constitution ng Athens. And then, they start having a form of government which is called democracy. Okay, so remember, um, in Greece, there are two kinds of people, uh, okay, and places. One is Athens which are for the intellectuals, and the other one is for the Spartans, which are for the who? The warriors. Okay? So kapag taga Athens ka, ibig sabihin mag-aaral ka, magiging intellectual ka, magiging philosopher ka. Pag nasa Sparta ka, ibig sabihin, you want to be a warrior? Okay? And then, when they study, guys are being focused to study physical education. Ganun talaga. And then, ang mga babae, syempre yan, para maging asawa, <laughs> paano maglaba, siguro, di ba? Okay, so, and then, what happened in 490 to 479 BC? Everything will change. Kung ang Greece ay namuno ng napakaganda at napaka komportable ang mga tao, but something will happen because yung mga kapitbahay ng mga countries may iingit sa'yo. Iluso po ng Persia ang Greece. Remember the Battle of Thermopylae when 300 warriors uh, under the King Leonidas somehow defended okay, that part, that gate of Greece against the Persian Empire led by King Xerxes. But so what happened? They all died except for one. So somehow those tribal war or those um, great battle would affect the calmness and uh, the kind of uh, community Greece and other countries has. Okay, so syempre, you need to remember this empire. Persian Empire under the rule of Darius and um, Xerxes is one of the greatest empires in the world. Pero kahit natalo sila nila ang Greece, that battle of Thermopylae, binalikan naman sila ulit ng Greece because um, people from Athens and Sparta joined forces together to be able to defeat the Persian Empire. Magandang gabi po, ma'am. Aileen Angra. Magandang gabi. Okay, so what else did Greece give us? Okay, so during those era, Greece also did not only give us those legacies which I mentioned to you, okay, the Acropolis and the temples of Hera, Parthenon, Epidaurus, etc., Ngayon hanggang ngayon pwede niyo pang mapuntahan yan. 
Okay? Trump, namnamin nyo kapag nagpunta kayo kung ano yung feeling na nakatayo kayo, nakaupo kayo sa isang napakatanda ng um, cultural heritage na iniwan ng mga Grego noong unang panahon. But not only those things, sabi ko nga, did I, I mentioned to you, not, all, not only those which Greek left us behind, so they also give us philosophies. Okay? So, Famous philosophers, talaga paborito ko si Socrates. Kilala nyo? Okay? Siya yung nagsabi na to know what you know and you know what you do not know is knowledge. Ang dami niyang um, napakagandang mga quotes na pag-iisipan mo talaga eh. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Sabi niya, um, there is only one good, that is knowledge, and evil, and that is ignorance. Okay, so how can you be able to be knowledgeable and not be ignorant? Well, the question is through education, diba? Through researching, through asking questions. Okay, sabi nga, only the um, question that is incorrect is the question that is not being asked. Okay. So, wag mahiyang magtanong. So, sabi pa ni philosopher na Socrates, ito yung maganda. By all means, marry. If you got a good wife, you'll become happy. If you'll get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. O, di ba? So, napakatindi rin ng abinigay niyang uh, legacy sa kanyang mga estudyante. Dito natin nakuha yung Socratic method na magtatanong ng mga estudyante pero hindi niya sasagutin. Instead, pag-iisipin niya yung mga estudyante niya. Anong sagot mo? ba? Diba? So, halimbawa, nagtanong kayo, sino si Socrates, ma'am? Sabi ko, dinidiscuss ko si Socrates, ba? Diba? Sino siya sa palagay niyo? Okay? Kung meron kayong Google, mag-Google kayo. Sagutin niyo sa akin kung sino si Socrates. Anong ginawa niya? Okay. So, isa sa mga estudyante niya si Plato, another philosopher. And the other one is Aristotle, na naging estudyante naman ni Plato. Tatlo silang nagbigay na maganda mga filosofiya sa buhay na sinunod ng maraming philosophers na mga sumunod na panahon. Ito pa yung isang magandang sinabi naman ni Plato. Okay. Be, kind, be kind to everyone you meet. Okay, because you never know what they have or what battle they are fighting at present. Okay? So, wag bastang parang i-judge mo yung isa. Hindi mo alam kung anong pinagdadaanan, no? Yun na sabi ni Plato. Isa pa, your silence is a consent. So, once you are being silent in in a particular thing or two, it means you agree to that, di ba? Kung hindi ka sumagot, kung hindi ka um nag-reason out, okay, walang no, walang yes, it means silent, yes. And then, another one is Aristotle. Si Aristotle ay naging uh, isang, hindi lang isang philosopher, kundi isang uh, botanist as well. So, siya, siya yung nagsabi na man is the one. Man is an animal. <laughs> We belong to the animal kingdom. But man is the highest form of animal because we know how to reason out. Exactly, right? Animals cannot reason out. Okay? So we are always debating. <laughs> we are always into what? Into constant um, reasoning and talking. Okay? Minsan nga, di tayo pumapayag kung mali tayo. And sabi ni Aristotle, excellence then, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act but a habit. Okay? So, sinabi niya rin na happiness depends upon ourselves. So, these three philosophers gave us uh, some things to ponder about life, about politics, about everything in life. Diba? ba? Uh, kaya sa ngayon, sila yung parang ginawang foundation ng mga present-day 
um, philosophers. Okay, so after the great philosophers, what do we have? And then after that, uh, parang uh, Greece somehow were also um, invaded by people from the Macedon. So if you are familiar with uh, King Philip of Macedon, he uh, extended his um, empire to Greece and he wanted to somehow make Greece parang, uh, to become a, a civilization uh, which will focus on having the same civilization with Macedonia. Kaya lang, he wasn't able to achieve that kind of um, goal kasi namatay siya sa battle and he was succeeded by his son Alexander the Great. Okay, and so who knows Alexander the Great? Okay, so he was tutored by Aristotle when he was still 16. He became a general at the age of 20 when his father died. And so his dream of his father to make an empire of Macedon and Greece, he fulfilled by get, getting out of Macedon and Greece, going as far as India. Imagine, okay, he almost had most of the very uh, a big empires in that part of Asia, but he suddenly died at the age of 33 for some reasons, okay? Um, nabuhay siya noong 356 BC, so what are those places he invaded, which is uh, always attributed to his name? One is Persia, the other one is India um, and Egypt, pero he rallied from Lebanon going to the eastern part of Asia. Imagine how vast, how big uh, the places of uh, the conquest of Alexander the Great. Um, he settled in Babylonia. He got sick there and he died there. Kaya lang sinasabi dito na he died at the age of 32 or 33. Mm, Alexander, sabi nila, died because of malaria, pero ang mga bagong historian sinasabing hindi, hindi namatay sa, <laughs> ng gugulo, hi Nelson, hindi namatay si Alexander the Great sa malaria. Pinag, this is being contested by some of the greatest um, historians nowadays, okay? Ang nangyari kay uh, Alexander the Great is false diagnosis. Kasi when he died, he was into so much pain, um, parang stomach pain at yun, okay? Tapos, hindi halos nagagalaw yung katawan niya. And then when they, thought, when they thought he died, after six days, hindi pa rin nabubulok yung katawan niya. They believed kasi, and Alexander believed that he is actually a god. And so the people also believed that he was a god. That's, that makes the why his body was not being rotten even after six days. But the truth is, maybe he was not yet dead after six days. Siguro namatay siya after six days. But during those days, buhay pa siya. Kasi nga, yung klase ng sakit na meron siya, yung tinatawag na GBS, autoimmune disorder. Uh, kasi ang sukatan lang nung unang panahon kung paano ka namatay, yung um, hindi ka na humihinga. Kapag may GBS ka pala, this is one rare disease ha, na konti lang yung mga taong nagkakaroon at nakukuha to sa mga bakterya sa paligid. Okay? Pag meron ka palang GBS, uh, minsan, na, na mahina na yung oxygen at halos hindi ka na humihinga. But it doesn't mean na patay ka na. Kasi noon, hindi nila pinupulsahan ang mga bangkay. Okay? Uh, parang inaano na lang nila sabi big kung, kung humihinga o hindi. Because Alexander the Great, according to that historian, um, has less oxygen. So talagang hindi na humihinga pero buhay pa daw. Okay? So hindi siya namatay sa malaria. Hindi siya namatay sa dengue. Hindi siya namatay sa AIDS. Okay? And baka daw namatay siya. Baka pa lang. Dito sa GBS, yung autoimmune disorder. Okay. Pero alam niyo bang, he is being considered as one of the most influential men all throughout the world, even at this day. And according to uh, the research, some uh, military academies, academies 
still teaching the kind of military strategies that Alexander the Great did during his conquest to the rest of Asia and Egypt. Ang galing ano? So, paano yung conquest niya? Anong ginawa niya? Well, he was a very disciplined man. Okay? So, at the same time, he was also a kind of general who will be very, um, what's this? The kind of general who will always ask no, about the situation of his soldiers. Hindi siya yung tipong ako yung general, kaya ako dapat masunod. At the same time, he's with them during the battle. Kaya ngayon, um, sa US, pag tinuturo, pag nasa laban sila, sa SEAL, US SEAL, alam niyo yun, sa sinasabi nilang one of the greatest um, learnings that we, we derive from the, uh, the life and the military conquest of um, Alexander the Great is that we as a leader should be fighting together with our men. Okay? Hindi kami pwedeng magutos lang na gawin mo. Kailangan kung pinapagawa namin sila sa kanila, alam din namin gawin niya. So that is the kind of leadership Alexander the Great had during his time. Kaya lang, di ba napakabata pa? Ma'am, ingat po lagi. <laughs> Maingat naman ako. Okay? Napakabata pa niya. Pero... For some reasons, marami siyang hindi ginawang marami siyang ginawang hindi maganda. Parang sinira niya din yung ibang mga lugar na sinakop niya, katulad ng Petra and Persepolis in Iraq. Napakagandang mga creations and buildings during the Persian Empire. Pero ang makikita mo na rin lang ngayon mga, mga, ang tawag, mga ano na lang, uh, ano tawag dito, mga haligi. Okay? So, Alexander the Great is one man, okay, which is very influential, especially siguro sa mga militar, di ba? Okay, and when it comes to leadership, he's being looked up to by some people, especially men, okay, because he was very good about that. Okay, so yun, sa bahagi pa rin yun ng Greece, okay? Uh, okay, now let's talk about some of the things that the, that the Greek uh, left behind. So you know what the Greek left behind aside from the 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 buildings, the temples of highest order, etc. They also gave us Homer. Okay, when it comes to literature, Homer gave us the Iliad and Odyssey and the story of Helen and Troy and Achilles and all. So this is very classic. Okay. And you, you as a tourism student should know the story about Od the Odyssey, the Iliad and Odyssey. This is one of the longest epics ever written in the world. One, but not the longest. Kasi ang longest po yung Mahabharata and Ramayana. Greece gave us also what? They also gave us drama and tragedy. Okay? They also gave us science and mathematics. Okay? And a lot more. And of course, arts and architecture, they lay the foundation of the beautiful arts, diba? I keep on telling my students, if you are going to compare the ancient um, arts and architecture that the early people of Greece um, provided us compared to the other um, kinds of arts and paintings and uh, sculptures of the other ancient people had in the past, you would say that the Greeks gave us parang a, a perfect sculpture defining everything about uh, the human body and all, diba? Which somehow get, they influence other uh, countries in Europe such as Rome and Italy, okay? And so let's talk about the, the next millennia. This time we talk about the time during the uh, the Roman Empire. Okay, anong taon na ito? So, ito, bahagi pa rin naman ito ng uh, 3000 BC. So, after that, 30 BC, that is the rise of the Roman Empire. Okay? So, the rise of the Roman Empire is really so huge. So, they started from Rome. Wala pa kasing Italia noon. Rome Empire pa lang. And so they, they somehow reach as far as 
France, France, Germany, the the the, the British Isle. They went as far as um, this Egypt, Egypt, and other places in Egypt, such as Carthage, and all in some parts of Asia. And so, if you are going to somehow identify what Rome has left behind, it's still there. Okay, example: the the Roman Empire built built a massive um, Roman road system. Okay, di ba sa kasaysayan, sila talagang gumawa niyan. Para saan ang road? Para sa tourism? Wala pong tourism nun. Okay, this is for them to easily um, somehow get from one place to another. Okay, so that they would really easily find out what is happening to the other tribe, which they conquer, and so on and so forth. It's so extensive. Okay, ang galing ng Roman engineers. Okay, they also gave us several bridges. Okay, an example is Pont du Gard. Good evening, Kiel. Okay, Pont du Gard in um, in France and several aqueducts. And some of the roads that the Roman Empire in 30 BC constructed are still passable in this time, 21st century. Ang galing no, ang tibay. Bakit? Kasi sila naman talaga, ang militar din naman talaga yung nakinabang noon. Okay? Madalian ni eh, para makapag-conquer talaga agad sila. O kaya naman, kapag may nanggugul, madali nilang uh, masaway. Oy, tigil kayo. ba Merong leader, parang ganon. So, ang extension niyan, uh, almost half of Europe eh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, what else? Of course, if you are going to Rome, which is known as the what is the tag, tag name for Rome? Alam nyo ba? What is the title given to Rome as a city? At bakit? Magandang gabi, Aileen. Alam nyo? Hindi. Rome is always known as the what? EJ. As the? The Eternal City. Oh my gulay. Why eternal? Okay, you go to Rome, and then you look at the city. Where could what, what can you find? Okay, so andun lang naman yung Colosseum. Ha, ayun on. Th thanks you, Hermie, ang tagal mong sumagot. Eternal city, andun lang naman yung Colosseum, di ba? The Roman Colosseum. Saan ginan? Colos, colo, hindi coli, Colosseum. Okay? So, doon lang naman ginagawa, di ba, yung anong tawag doon sa mga fights na yung gladiatorial fights. So, it was built 79-80. And it's also known as the Flavian Amphitheater. Okay? So, what for? This is basically for the entertainment of the, the, of the royals, of the emperor, okay, and the senators and their family and the people as well. Pero alam mo na kung anong mangyari pag nandun sa merong gladiatorial fight sa Coliseum. Anyway, that is another discussion. So they also have their the Pantheon. Okay, so for the longest time. Ito kasabay ang ginawa ng Coliseum. Alam niyo ba na habang ginagawa, ang, habang nagkakaroon sila ng uh, parang opening ceremony, sa pagbubukas ng Colosseum ng 79 AD, sumasabog ang vulkan ng Vesuvius sa Pompeii, sa Naples, Italy. Ayan. So habang may party doon sa Colosseum, Colosseum, may namamatay doon sa Pompeii and Herculaneum. Okay? So ngayon, hindi niyo malalaman kung ano yan. Alam niyo ba? Hi, Inay, I'm here. Would you like to share? How can you share? Okay? So, you look at these two uh, events that had happened in the past, di ba? So, tuwan-tuwa sila sa uh, foundation or the, the party happening in Coliseum and uh, the events that's happening there. Pero without them knowing it, sa damakmak yung namamatay doon sa Vesuvius, I mean sa, sa Pompeii. Okay? So, but just the same... Itong mga lugar na binabanggit ko ay mga lugar na hanggang ngayon pwede mong makita sa Rome. 
kaya nga eternal city. Not only we think about of those um, earliest uh, constructed buildings that the Roman Empire built, okay, there are still mummified remains in Pompeii. Correct, there are still mummified. Actually, yung mga mummies, uh, yung mga, nat, mga namatay kasi na ano sila, parang anong tawag doon? Um, na preserve sila dahil uh, napaghalo ata yung ash and lamig tapos kung ano yung paano sila namatay ganun mo nakikita nakapreserve sila sa Naples Museum now Pompeii and some parts of Herculaneum are considered to be uh, what's this a ghost town, a ghost city okay nandito po ang uh, nasa ba yung Naples nandito bahagi yung Naples okay kaharap nun yung Mount Vesuvius. One of the very destructive um, this, um, ano to, eruption of a volcano. Akala ng mga tao nung unang panahon ano, ano, at uh, the end, that's the end of the world. Maybe sa kanila. Yung brains nung mga ibang victims became glass sabi ni Kuya Marvin, oh, naging glass dahil nga dun sa mga um, pyroclastic materials na humalo sa katawan nila. Okay? If you could Google Pompeii, okay, matatakot ka. It's very gross. Kasi there is one part na yung mga tao uh, sa isang bahagi ng building, lahat sila, magka- yung ibang kakayakap, tapos lahat nakanganga, they are all in pain, tapos yung iba parang umaakyat, pero inabot na sila. Ganon na preserve yung mga katawan nila. And it's still there. Okay? So, nakaka... kakatakot. What if... I don't know. I don't know why it happened in 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 Vesuvius. Only in Vesuvius. In, in Pompeii. In Pompeii, I mean. Okay, so let's get out of Colosseum and Pantheon. And then we have also some places in Alcantara, Spain, which you get to see the beautiful um, bridges they built. And this is also part of the Roman Empire engineering. Buti pa sila, no? Samantala lang yung, yung, mga, yung, mga, build, yung mga bridges uh, bumagsak na. Yung kagagawa ng bridge sa mga probinsya natin. There's a song about Pompeii by Bastille depicting the lives of those people na running. Oh, yeah, really. Okay. Meron ding pelikula uh, ang, ang, ang Pompeii. Meron ding book. Alam nyo, basahin nyo sa kapanoorin nyo para you get to have parang a sort of, ano, kung ayaw nyo magbasa managin ng pelikula, at least you get to see what happened. Di ba? So, binasi lang naman nila yun sa mga accounts ng mga researches, what happened in Pompeii. Pero love story yun. Uh, yung, yung, may pagka-love story yung Pompeii. There's always love naman er- everywhere you go. And then, of course, another influence of the Great Roman Empire was the Hadrian Wall. So where can you find the Hadrian Wall? Um, it's a wall you can find in the northeastern part of Scotland, in the United Kingdom. And then also, if you get to Turkey, Turkey, they have there the Ephesus, which was once upon a time a very great library building. Kaya lang nasira na rin. Pero ang makikita mo na lang mga columns, columns. But then, you still get to see how uh, great could be these buildings and this uh, library. In, if, in any case, talagang, di ba, buo pa sila. Um, what are the reasons why nasisira itong mga buildings na ginawa, no? Sana, meron pang ganyan eh. Aaron, okay. Well, if there is a war, nasisira yan, o kaya naman, kung hindi, pero masasabi kung napakatibay nila kasi nakatayo pa rin hanggang ngayon, talagang ang nagpasira lang sa kanila yung mga nagaganap na gera. Okay, now, um, Let's talk about the Dark Ages. This is another interesting event or that happens in the history of Europe. What are the five major causes of the Dark Ages? One, that is actually the fall of the Roman Empire. Siyempre, sabi ko nga sa inyo, walang habang buhay. Walang kalaging uh, on top sila. So bakit nagkaroon ng, or bakit bumaba o bumagsak ang Roman Empire? Simple lang, 
nagkalasan yung mga tao under his em- under its empire. Pangalawa, um, yung mga sumunod na emperor, mga sosyong-asyong na, uh, I mean, mga mahihina ng klase, yung iba nga karamihan bakla, I mean, um, iba yung gusto nila, hindi sila concentrated in ruling the empire. So, one of the reasons of the, why there was a dark ages, or the, this was during the uh, medieval time, okay, was one nga yung, the decline of the Roman Empire, okay? Napakalaki kasi ng ginawa ng Ro- Roman Empire sa kabuan ng Euro- kasaysayan ng Europa. And then another reason is nagkaroon ng Little Ice Age, okay? Uh, so marami ang namatay dahil sa sobrang lamig, hindi nila kinaya, kumbaga, hindi sila handa. So meron pa lang Little Ice Age na, de- na naganap. Opo, kailan yan? Mga 1,000 AD na ulit ng 1,580. Okay? So, next, nagkaroon ng malawakang famine sa Europe. Pagkagutom, pagkatuyot. Okay? So, uh, sa Europe ang pinag-uusapan natin, hindi sa Africa. Ha? Pero nangungulit yung mga yan eh. Yung mga panahon ng ganyan. So, yung mga tao, maraming namatay dahil walang makain. Di ba? Ang sinuwerte lang mabuhay ng mga yun, syempre yung mga mayayaman, yung mga nag ng mga pagkain, uh, yung mga marunong dumiskarte. Okay, pangalawa, yung lack of good roads. Um, na, nagkaroon ba ng effect ito sa mga traveling people? Of course! Bakit? Who would like to travel if yung lahat ng paligid ng roads na yan, may mga bandido, di ba? Andun po nakapaligid ang mga magnanakaw, mga mamamatay tao. Kumbaga lahat sila kapit na sa patalim. Diba? Okay, so who would like to travel? Dati kasi parang umaangat na yung parang era when people started traveling because um, Rome gave us, they gave them good roads. And then they can be able to witness some happenings in, in Greece, for example, attending the Olympic Games. Okay? And then they have heard beautiful places all over Greece and some parts of Rome. And then most of them would want us to witness how um, gladiatorial fights are being uh, fought. Okay? So, nagta-travel na yung mga yan. But after the decline of the Roman Empire or during the, the Roman Empire's decline, walang nag-travel. Anong nag- nangyari bukod doon? Okay, bukod doon, bukod sa, sa, sa mga reasons na yan, Isa pang nangyari sa kabuuan ng Europe ay yung tinatawag na Black Death, the bubonic plague. Are you familiar with the song, Ring a ring a roses, a pocket full of poses, asha, asha, all died down, or we all fall down. Parang ina-attribute nila tong kantang to doon sa Black Death. Bakit? Ano ba yung Black Death? It happened sometime around 1347. Um... AD na ito, 1347. So, ano yung Black Death? ba Galing ito sa mga afli ng mga daga. Galing din sa Asia. Okay? Na umabot hanggang Europe. Na kapag ikaw ay kinagat nung, ano ba sa Tagalog yung pulgas? Okay? Um, ang maapektuhan sa'yo yung parang pulmon, pulmonary mo. And then you'll get to have some sort of cough and sipon. First, um, maghahatsing ka. Achoo! Okay. Now, you notice kapag ka naghahatsing kayo ngayon, uh, people will say, bless you. Or, oh, God bless you. Okay. It has something to do with what happened during the Black Death. Kasi nung walang panahon, pag naghatsing yung mga taong yun, Diretso na yun ang kamatayan nila. Infected na sila ng virus. At walang gamot. Okay, kaya tumatawag na sila ng pare, tumatawag na sila ng someone to bless these people. Okay, because there's no really parang uh, a chance for them to survive. And then they'll get away. Mabubulok na. Kaya kumalat yan. How many years? It took 47 to 1353 for them to be able to uh, somehow control the bubonic plague. So, anong kinalaman ng kanta? Kasi sabi nila, ring a ring a roses, a packet full of poses, yung naa-aching sila, tapos all fall down. Pero sinasabi nila, hindi naman totoo yun. Kumbaga, laro lang yun ng mga bata na ina-attribute nila sa, sa bubonic plague. Pero, 
we, we really never knew. Okay? Paano na i-stop yung bubuniklig? Uh, parang pandemya yan eh. <laughs> Pabalik-balik actually. Parang yung COVID. Merong iba't ibang klaseng COVID. Yung nangyayari ngayon, COVID-19. Ito yung pinakamatindi na hanggang ngayon wala pang sagot kung kailan matatapos. Ganon din ang nangyari nung 1347 to 1353. They thought that it's the wrath of God. Parang, wow, is this the end of the world? Okay, bakit namamatay na? Umabot yung Black Death as far as uh, the northern part of Europe. Ang daming namatay in England, in Germany, in France, halos buong part ng Europe talaga na apektuhan. 50% above total population perish because of the Black Death. So what was the reason? Anong sagot? I'm back, mommy. Ano, ang, sa, ang, ang um, to, pumigil sa Black Death. Penicillin. <laughs> It took them several years to be able to uh, uh, provide a kind of uh, medicine to be able to control the bubonic plague. Nangyayari pa rin ba mama ang bubonic plague? Opo, paulit-ulit. Pero hindi na, hindi na siya ikinamamatay ng mga tao kasi antibiotics can cure it. Okay? Um, paano yung COVID-19, ma'am? Hindi natin alam, pero sabi ng kaibigan ko, uh, if you are familiar with the VC, VC o virgin coconut oil, okay, um, isang malaking ano yon ginagamit ng ibang mga hospital daw to be able to help the, the COVID patient. And yun, gumagaling naman sila. Oy, hi Florence, I'm lecturing. Medyo kinakabahan ako actually kasi alam ko nandiyan kayo. So I I just finished the Black Death story. So it entered England in 1348 and then it killed, sabi nga, 30 to 50% total population of most of the, not only the England, the English people, but most of the European continent. Okay. Ang nakakatakot, ano? So, we never knew what will happen, pero nandyan lang yung mga viruses. Tapos, ang, ang pandemya talaga nauulit. So, black, that is one of the reasons during uh, the dark ages in Europe. Talagang, wow, parang, parang, tapos na ba ang mundo ng mga panahon na yan? Okay, pero syempre, hindi naman. Okay, 500 AD. So, dito po, pumainan lang ang mga grupo ng mga Vikings. Sila Ragnarok, sila Bluetooth. <laughs> Are you familiar with them? Okay, si Ragnarok, ano yun? Vikings yun. Si Bluetooth, yung ginagamit nyo na Bluetooth. Uh, galing yung kay King Harald, Bluetooth. Bakit ginamit yung, uh, bakit ipinangalan sa kanya yung Bluetooth? Kasi di ba pag may Bluetooth, parang nakocompress niya at uh, parang somehow nagiging united, yung lahat ng files mo, something like, di ba? Kasi ganun ang ginawa ni King Harald Bluetooth doon sa sa, Nor- sa sa bahagi na, sa Norway. Okay? Sa kanyang lugar na kung saan siya namuno. Anyway, Marvin, another misconception about the Vikings is that they didn't wear worn headgears. Okay? Yes, they don't have these horn headgears. Okay? But the truth about the Vikings is that they are muscular, they are big, they sported long hair, and most of them are blue-eyed, right? Okay, so yun yung mga DNA ng mga Vikings, okay? They are, there are so, so many known, not so many, but there are some known Vikings uh, who, who was really seafarers or who first discovered this this country or the, that that place. One is Leif Erikson. Am I correct, um, Kuya Marbs? Leif Erikson um, is considered by most of the American historians to be the first who discovered America. So it's not Columbus. Okay. Why? Well, if you get there to some place in Maine, uh, you 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 you'll get to see, or no, in 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 Canada, you'll get to see some of the remains of the of the Viking community. Yeah, he was the the first one to set foot in America. Leif Erikson. Leif Erikson was the son of Eric 
the red. Remember that? Okay? Wala po kasi silang apelido. Kumbaga, ang tawag lang sa kanya, uy, anak siya ni Leaf. Anak siya ni Eric. Kaya, Leaf Eric's son. Naging Leaf Eric's son. Okay? Si Eric naman, ana anak ni Eric the Red. Okay? The son of Eric. Okay? So, anyway. Um, what did Vikings... Uh, do what were the influences of the Vikings to the European society, the, to the European community? Um, unang unang tatapang ng mga taong to they actually what they uh, rampage. <laughs> so what is rampage? They rampage some of the European uh, kingdoms. Talagang ang lalaking tao they would sail from one place to another and then they'll get to one kingdom and then they'll harass the people and then they'll ask the king to give this that uh, this amount or this money or these things these people or else you'll get so walang pumapalag kaya ang tawag sa kanila barbarians di ba kasi hindi nila iniisip yung importansya ng buhay wala silang religion pero man bakit na nahinto yung mga vikings well because they assimilated in some other places in Europe para sigurong natapos na rin yung kanilang uh, paggala. Uh, but then they are known to be the best seafarers in the world. Imagine with their kind of boat, they were able to sail from Europe to that part of uh, North America. Ang galing, di ba? Okay. So, uh, and uh, the Vikings, sinasabi ko nga sa mga estudyante ko, the Vikings are the people in the places such as Iceland, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Uh, Finland is not part of the Viking culture. Pero uh, geographically nga, um, Finland could, is part of the Scandinavian region. Kasi nga, nandun na siya eh. Iba? But culturally, it's not. Because uh, hindi siya kasama dun sa, sa Viking na yun eh. So the story about Vikings is so limited because there's no written about them. Pero, there's always a continuous story coming from the people. It is through sagas. Yung mga kwentong galing sa ninuno mo, sabi ni ganyan, sabi ni ganyan, so pinagduktong-duktong. At the same time, some remains of an artifacts about them happen to, to, to be uh, discovered by the archaeologists and some historians. And so, nalaman natin kung ano yung mga Vikings o sino sila o kung anong klaseng tao sila ng mga panahon na yon. Totoo ba na merong uh, mga dragon ang mga mga Vikings? Kasi yung mga yung mga ano nila, yung mga boats nila laging merong dragon head, di ba? Meron ng isang palabas how to tame a dragon. It's about the story of a Viking. So you can be able to at least see for yourself how do they look like. I, I love that that film, How to Tame a Dragon. Si Sino nga yung pangalan ng dragon yung walang tooth? Anyway, so uh, they were able to somehow uh, break up the Roman Empire. Toothless, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Gusto niyo rin yun. <laughs> Tiba, <ang> tapang niya. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so isa din sa mga dahilan kung bakit nag-break up yung uh, Roman Empire because of these Vikings, nakigulo sila, ba? Kaya somehow, ang Roman Empire natapos. Okay? Pero hindi lang yung dahilan. And then, of course, uh, we can be able to also include the, the Crusade. Uh, it's one of the events that happened during the Dark Ages in Europe. So what is the Crusade? So that is uh, actually the the event where in people in in the Christian world in Rome would want to go to Jerusalem to get back Jerusalem from the hands of the of the Turks. Remember, kasi parang ang tao na sa Jerusalem mga Muslim, tiba. Kaya nga pag pumunta ka ng Jerusalem, you can find in there what um the ano yung golden roof don. Shucks. Yung, yung temple ng mga Muslim, the Dome of the Rock. That's for Muslims, basically. And then, kasabay no, nandun din sa Jerusalem, yung ibang mga Christian uh, churches and all, related naman to Jews and some um, Catholics and some Christians, really. Okay, so, isang matinding kasaysayan din ito, isang matinding ano din tong crusade na to, kasi pinili talaga ng mga popes, yung mga hari, yung mga hari, pinili ng mga tao nila na pumunta. Mayroon pa nga 
uh, Children's Crusade, imagine that. Some went there on foot. Paano yun? I don't know, pero yung ibang din na nakarating na matay na. <laughs> but one of the bidas in the crusade is one a king by the name of King Richard the Lionhearted. Why was he called the Lionhearted? Eh, para namang leon kasi yung puso. Walang sinisino. Lahat ng madaanan niya, kahit hindi Muslim, pinapapatay. So parang literally talagang nagbistulang kulay dugo, uh, kulay ano yung pula yung lupa dahil sa da- di- damak ng, sa dami ng dugong dumanak dahil pinapatay lahat yan ni uh, King Richard the Lionhearted. So gano'n na lang talaga yung galit ng mga Muslim sa mga Kristiyano na pag pumupunta sa kanila ay may suot-suot pang parang ano dyan na may malaking cross dito specifying that we are the people of God but then hey diba? why are you killing us? Diba? If you are the people of God, utos ba yan ng Diyos nyo? Patayin kami. Wala kaming kinalaman sa gera nyo. Okay? Itong lugar na to, Jerusalem is for the Jews. Taga-Europe kayo. Okay? So, bakit kayo nagpupunta dito? Holy war. Okay? That is... But, but then, kasi nga, by power yan eh. Bakit nga ba nagpunta ang mga English people or European people sa utos ng Pope sa Jerusalem? Simple lang, di ba? That's the place where Christ was born. That's the place where he died. That's the place of the religion that the Holy Roman Empire created, which is all about Christianity and Catholicism. Okay? Anyway, there's so much to talk about crusade, pero eventually, when they get control of Jerusalem, did they get control of Jerusalem? Natalo sila sa laman because there is one king of Egypt, okay, who went there and then asked them to leave the place and that he was King Saladin, okay? Balik ta dito ni King Richard the Lionhearted. Hi, okay. Okay, kasi siya, Um, pinabayaan niyang lumabas ng Jerusalem lahat ng Kristiyano na walang namatay. That's why hinangaan siya ng maraming European leaders and European people. Kabalik na naman ng galit ng mga Muslim sa mga ibang European kings and knights na meron kayong cross. Kaya kita mo ngayon, what is happening between Christians and Muslims? Di ba laging may gulo? Kasi may pinaghuhugutan. Yun yung hugot nila. You murdered us during the past, during the ancient times. Kumbaga, ito yung ganti namin sa inyo. Okay, matatapos ba yun? We never knew. Pero it's all about religion. Mahirap. Okay? So, what happened next? What caused the fall of the Roman Empire naman? Okay? Kami na, Dark Ages in Europe, di ba? Huwag kayong malito ah. So, ano yung mga reason bakit nagkaroon ng Dark Ages in Europe? Sabi ko nga, unang-una, fall of the Roman Empire, then nagkaroon ng Little Ice Age, right? Then na- nagkaroon ng ano pa, Black Death, nagkaroon ng famine. Okay, those are some of the reasons why tinawag na Dark Ages sa panahong yon ang Europe. Parang sunod-sunod yung mga nangyayaring... Uh, halos ikanam, ikamatay ng buong populasyon ng Europe. Okay, for some reasons, marami pa rin ang nakaligtas. Okay? So, uh, now, let's talk about what caused the fall of the Roman Empire. This is very interesting, especially one particular, um, I've researched him, one particular emperor, ha? One cause is the conflict between the emperor and the senate. Hindi magkusundo. Remember, the very first emperor that held or that administered the, the whole of the Roman Empire was uh, Emperor Octavian, okay, which later changed his name to Augustus Caesar. He was actually the ampon of Julius Caesar, who was supposed to be the very first emperor of Rome. Kaya lang, kinatay na siya ng kaibigan niyang si Brutus. Hindi pwede. Diba? Pinatay siya kasi ayaw siyang naging leader. And so, nagkagulo ang Senate. Ano ba sinasabi kong conflict between the emperor and the Senate? Mahirap kasi maging emperor. Minsan, kahit na um, kahit na 
you are so um, uh, confident, you have the, the leadership, you have the money, may mga kalabang ka mas papera sa'yo at mas mapolitikan, politika, nagkakabintahan yan. So, nagkakamulungan sila. Okay? Kaya madalas, nagkakaroon ng conflict. Okay? Yung emperor minsan, hindi sinusunod ng, ng, ng senado. Yung senado, may sarili silang gusto. So, hindi naging mahusay ang, ang, ang politika during the, um, the the times na talagang pabagsak na. Okay, next. Yung weakening of the emperor's authority. Yun na nga sinasabi natin. Isang pelikula na gusto kong panoorin nyo, ha? Yung Ah. Uh, ano nga ba 'yun? <laughs> the Gladiator. Okay, doon kasi pinakita yung isang mga emperor na isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit bumagsak talaga yung Roman Empire. He was Commodus. Okay? The son of Marcus Aurelius. Totoo yung si Marcus Aurelius, totoo si Commodus. Hindi totoo si Maximus ha. Kwento na lang 'yon. Pero ipinakita doon sa pelikula kung paano napaka-insecure ni Commodus at walang ginawa kundi magkaroon lang lagi ng mga uh, ano to, uh, sa Colosseum, yung gladiatorial fight, hindi siya nag-concentrate about holding the power or creating uh, another, some policies in how to hold his or administer the Roman Empire. So he's one of the, those weaklings um, that somehow shattered the Roman Empire. Okay, pero magandang pelikula yon panoorin nyo. Anyway, So another one is the political corruption nga of the of of the empire kaya nga nagkaroon ng Ides of March or Edes of March remember that okay and then na, the other one of the reasons of the Roman Empire's collapse is the money wasting ano yung money wasting sinong nagwe-waste s'yempre yung mga emperor okay they're so lavish partying Okay, and prostitution is rampant. Okay, an example na sinasabi ko nga si Elagabalus. If you are going to research about Elagabalus, grabe itong batang to. Bata pa lang kasi, parang uh, 16 or 17 naging ano na siya, naging emperor dahil namata yung tito niya ba, tapos siya yung inuluklok ng kanyang uh, lola. So, uh, ano siyang, paano ang lavish party? Um, ayun nga, um, alam niyo ba class na ang mga emperor at ibang mga European people, they have partners both male and female. This is part of the Roman society. Okay? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na mga, um, they belong to LGBT community, but because this is parang the norm of the society. Even Julius Caesar, Uh, was told to have some uh, male partners, sex partners, and of course, female female partners. Kaya nga may anak at asawa yung mga yan. Eh. Okay? Uh, for some reasons, um, hindi ko ma-explain kung bakit, pero ganun sila. Okay? So yung nga si Elaga, Elagabalus, um, lalaki, 18 years old, may asawa, oo, pero may mga boyfriends din siya. Okay? At sinasabing isa ata siya sa pinakaunang tao na ito talagang parang gusto niya babae. Ang kasi kasi parang nagpapalit siya ng uh, sex organ. Parang, I don't know kung tama ako. Pag transgender ba, nagpapalit? <laughs> Nalilito ako dun eh. Okay? Or siguro kasi... O, oh, sabihin natin hindi. Hindi kasi imposible mapalitan, di ba? Pero mahilig siyang magsuot ng damit pang babae, ganyan, to entertain the guests, especially yung mga boyfriends niya. Doon mismo sa party, nagkakaroon sila ng parang orgy and all. Ang saya-saya. Okay? Uh, alak dito, pagkain dito, pera, pera, etc. And ang lupit niya. Uh, pinapatay niya yung mga taong hindi niya gusto tapos minsan sa party niya sabi ng isang research na nabasa ko naglalabas ng mga uh, poisonous snakes nagkakagulo talaga at habang nagkakagulo ang mga taong mata ng party tawa lang siya ng tawa si Raulo di ba okay so pinatay siya ng mga ng mga bodyguards niya dahil hindi na natagalan yung kanyang pag uh, uri ng pamumuno at pati yung pagpa-party you you learn something about you read something about Elagabalus ma, ma ma ano kayo, matawag dito, malulula. 
Ganun po ba ma'am nung panahon na yon? Sobra pa, konti pa lang yung alam nyo. Okay, ang dami pang nakakatakot at nakakarimarin ng mga kasaysayan nung panahon ng Roman Empire. Okay, naiihi ako, ang hirap. Okay. So, another one is slave labor and price competition. Di ba sa Roman Empire, bumibili sila ng mga slaves? Okay, so yung mga mayaman, syempre may mga slaves, nakakabili. Kaya yun ang ginagamit nila para magsaka itilang land nila okay at kaya nakaka nakakabenta sila ng mas mura ng mga mga products nila sa market compare doon sa mga uh, ibang mga tao na binabayaran nila yung mga nagsasaka hindi sila makapag-compete doon sa presyo na binaba, binababaan ng mga may kakaya ng bumili ng slave so ito dahil sa walang fair competition o oh, Um, pinabagsak talaga natin Roman Empire. So, nagkaroon din ng economical decline. But then, if you are going to, and so much military spending is one also of the reasons why, okay, mas kasi uh, pinuna nila ng pondo ang militar para makasakop ng marami. Okay, in the end, nalaglag din sila. So, there was no uh, technological advancement during those times. So, there are so other reasons why Roman Empire declined. Okay, so, and another one is that because uh, yung weakening of the emperor's authority, which embraced Christianity. Remember, uh, Constantinople, accordingly, was the first one who embraced Christianity, especially when he was dying. So, i-research yung kung totoo, di ba? He was the one who called the Council of Nicaea. And because he knew, he knew very well that Rome was weakening and would fail, very near. So parang, ano yung pwedeng humawak at magpatatag pa sa Roman Empire? Since sabi nila, ang mga tao naniniwala na sa Kristo, kay Kristo, after his death, naging Christian na yung ibang mga tao, kaya ngayon mga Christian na yon nagtatago, okay, at pag may namamatay sa kanila, inililibing nila sa katakum sa ilalim, okay, ng lupa ng ng Roma. Kaya ngayon may mga katakums doon. Isang tourist attraction na naman yon okay, So, parang drag tourism. Kaya, makakakita talaga kayo ng mga uh, ginawa ng mga unang tao na ngayon, parang, uy, tourist attraction na pala itong mga to na dati. Isang masakit na kasaysayan sa mga tao. Dahil, ano, kailangan pa nilang itago yung mga ililibing nilang mga kamag-anak dahil sa takot sa emperor. Kasi, pag nalamang Christian nga sila, di ba, papatayin sila. But, eventually, it was the Roman Empire who controlled the, the, the religion and make the people Christians kasi ito pa yung pwedeng humawak sa imperyo nila. Good evening po, ma'am. Oh, good evening. Are you listening? Thank you for listening. Okay, may question ba kayo? So, kaya, tanong kayo, di ba, ano ang, sa mga Catholics, pag tinanong, anong religion kayo? Anong ilalagay nyo? Catholic. Yung iba, ano? Roman Catholic. Hindi ba kayo nagtaka, but may Roman Catholic yon, Okay. Kasi pag Roman Catholic, ibig sabihin, doon kayo mismo galing sa Roman Catholicism, which was created by the Roman Empire at that time na talagang naghihingalo na yung imperyo ng Rome. Okay? So it was Rome who founded Catholicism. And the center of the Roman Catholic Church is in Vatican. Okay? Inihiwalay na lang yun. Okay, Vatican is actually in Rome, but Vatican is a state itself. It's one country itself, which is being ruled by the Pope and is considered to be the smallest state in the world. Only around 1,000 are people in, um, uh, in, in Vatican. Okay, so, ano pa? May tanong kayo. Okay, so that's it. And then another one, slave labor, it's not sabi na yun. So, after the Roman Empire, what happened next? Okay, wait lang. So we have the, the Renaissance, right? And so what is the Renaissance and what influences in the Renaissance gave the European... Um, European continent. But in a sense, it's all about what? The bringing back of the of the past culture. Diba? So this is a French a French word which means 
the rebirth of knowledge. Because during the Dark Ages in Europe, during the Roman Empire, people and most European concentrated in what? In military. In military conquest, forgetting about education, forgetting about uh, culture, for, forgetting about the people, okay, and religion as well, or they have religion pala, pero uh, wala silang kultura. And so after everything that had happened during the Dark Ages and soon to, and the Roman Empire, soon they realized, we need to rethink, we need to uh, to somehow um, change. And so started the, Ro the, the Renaissance, Renaissance in Florence, Italy, okay, in the 1400s to the 16th century. There they started what um, creating beautiful paintings, okay, let studying, okay, considering the culture of the people, okay, educating themselves, build more buildings, architecture, and all. Dito lumabas yung magagaling na uh, mga pintor. Remember the Five Ninja Turtles, okay? Rebirth of royalty, rebirth of knowledge. So, who are who are the names of the five ninja turtles, which are considered to be the best painters during the Renaissance? Sige nga. Yeah, I'll give you one. Michelangelo. <laughs> The other one, Raphael. The other one, Leonardo. Okay, tama. Leonardo. The other one, who else? Tatlo na. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello. <laughs> Isa pa. Isa pa. O meron na sumagot ng Leonardo and Donatello and Raphael and Michelangelo. And who else? Wala. Nalima sila. Okay. Assignment nyo yan na. Quiz ko yan sa inyo. Okay. So who are they? They are the best that the Renaissance produced. Donatello, Michelangelo, Leonardo, Raphael. Four, nin ah, four ninja turtles lang pala. Pero aside from them, meron pang ibang magagaling na painters. Okay. Not only painters. Let's talk, let's talk about first... Uh, I Nakaka-isang oras na tayo. Are, are you still okay? <laughs> Nakaka- one, one hour and 15 minutes na. Master Splinter, JK. <laughs> You're still okay to listen? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Leonardo da, da Vinci. So, sabihin ko sana Leonardo DiCaprio. Bakit ba naging pangalan niya yun? Alam niyo ba kung bakit Leonardo ang pangalan ni Leonardo Cati Caprio? Well, kasi habang buntis ang nanay niya, nandun sila sa loob ng uh, Louvre Museum. Buntis, siya sa, buntis yung nanay niya sa kanya. At nakatingin siya exactly dun sa Mona Lisa painting ni Leonardo da Vinci nung sumisipa siya sa tiyan ng nanay niya. Kaya when um, the mother gave birth to Leonardo da Caprio, he named it Leonardo da Caprio. But anyway, so let's talk about Leonardo da Vinci. He was a very, he was the master of all the painters. I think he was. He was one of, uh, he is very incomparable. Wala, wala siyang katulad. Um, he was actually uh, parang out of this world. Uh, parang napaka-advanced ng uh, isip niya compare mo sa mga taon ng panahon niya. Okay, paano, paano? Kasi nung unang panahon, um, hindi pa talaga ang, ang katawan ng tao para sa mga ibang tao sa grado, hindi mo pwedeng galawin, etc. Pero siya, ninana, nagnanakaw siya ng mga cadavers and he was the one who opened one cadaver and he studied no? the, the ins and outs of the human body. Kaya siya po yung nagdrawing ng human anatomy na malaking tulong sa medisina, sa siyensa. Yung drawing na yun, isa-isa, anong laman ng loob ng katawan ng tao? O hindi ba? Kung hindi ganun si Leonardo da Vinci, paano ma sino ang maglalakas loob para gawin yun, buksan yung katawan ng tao at i-drawing ng human anatomy? Siya lang ang nakagawa, no? Okay? So, nobody question. They never question the, the minds, the beautiful minds of Leonardo da Vinci. Okay? So, syempre, malaking issue sino si Mona Lisa. Napakaliit lang ng painting ni Mona Lisa, pero nasaan yan? Wala yan sa, sa Italy. 
may mga chika daw na riddles daw yung human anatomy ni Leonardo. So, anong chika doon? Malakas yung ulan sa inyo? Kasi dito sa amin, walang antok na. <laughs> antok na raw sila ni... Oh, you can go, you can go. So, if you are really that antok, it's 9.20. You can go. So... Sino na nung naiwan? Can, are we going to stop na? So I can continue the next time. Marami pa akong kwento. Kasi parang idudugtong natin ito. Bakit talagang number one ang, 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 ang Europe? In terms of na, the number two is arrivals. Lahat na kinukwento ko, bahagi ng mga lugar na pupuntahan o pinupuntahan ng mga turista sa buong Europa. I think that they are really wondering, okay? The fact that Europe was the first to become modern in their civilization and of course the one who became superpower because of their conquest all throughout the world, okay? They amass so much wealth, okay? They amass so much uh, uh, knowledge in terms of going around the world. That's one of the reasons what made them superpower. Okay. And so a lot of us that did that, no? to learn something about the food and the culture. Viruvian. Okay, so, um, Mark Ashley, iba naman yung Viruvian ma man. Oo. Um, yun naman yung dapas, di ba, ng, ng katawan ng tao. Sinasabi kasi ni, a, a perfect body, according to Leonardo da Vinci, has, has to have a perfect symmetry ito, pati yung kamay, yung paa, etc. Viruvian man, sa kanya din galing yun. Okay? Ayan. Thank you. What else do we have? I -i. Kasi hindi ko alam kung itutuloy ko. Itutuloy ko ba? Ah, Botichetti. Thank you, Mark Ashley. Yung isa. Okay? Tutuloy ko ba? Or bukas naman? <laughs> Sagot. Ah, carry pa. So, itulik ko si Leonardo. Tapos, meron ako nabasa sa National Geographic Magazine, no? When he was still a, a teenager, a very young, hindi, hindi nga teenager, parang 11 years old, Oh, oh. When he was still 11 years old, si Leonardo da Vinci, he was sent by his father in one of the painting classes in uh, Milan, Italy. Kasi sa Milan sila na, nandoon. So, tinignan siya ng, ng painter. Tapos sabi sa kanya, okay, he, this is your assignment. You paint one cherubim, cherubim in this painting. Andun yung painting ni, andun na, nag, meron ng painting doon na si Virgin Mary at ibang mga cherubims. Di ba yung mga cherubims na yan, yung mga angel na ulo lang, tapos uh, kulot yung buhok, tapos may pakpak. Di ba parang gano'n? Oo. So, that was the first assignment of Leonardo da Vinci. And so, he went to the painting and then he painted his own uh, sort of uh, cherubim. Painting, painting. So, are you done? Yes, master, I'm done. Tapos pagkakita dun sa painting ni Leonardo da Vinci ng teacher niya, napabitaw sa, sa brush. Tapos parang masabi na, parang natulala na sinabi, from this on, I'm not going to use my brush anymore. Kasi he realized that this, this child is a genius. Bakit ma'am? Kasi yan din drawing niya, alam nyo? Hindi yung Cherubim na ulo tapos sinipakpak, iba. Ang din-drawing niyang cherubim or angel na bata, nakadamit, okay? Nakadamit na nakatalikod siya sa frame, yung katawan niya nakatalikod, pero nakaharap yung ulo niya dun sa, ano, sa magla, yung sa makakakita sa kanya. Na pag nakita mo yung, yung mukha niya, you will really know that that child is an angel. I saw the picture sa National Geographic. Ang galing. Okay? Bata pa lang, di ba, ganun na? 
So, sino nagturo sa kanya? Paano? Kaya nga, dapat yung mga ganun tao talaga, i-sponsoran. And he was sponsored. And that was the time when most of uh, the greatest painters in that part of Italy roam around places and started uh, building and constructing and making, etc. One of that is Michelangelo as well. He was commissioned by the Pope to do the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Ang hirap kaya nun, iba? So ngayon, makikita pa ba yung Sistine Chapel and the painting of Michelangelo? Nandun pa rin. Okay, so these are legacies. See? So kasi katulad ng... Okay, let's, let's identify what are really the countries which are often visited by some people or most people no, in, in Europe. Number one yun, France. Hindi pa tayo nakakapunta sa France. Italia pa lang. Kasamang Italy, Italy, Italy sa uh, five uh, most often visited by tourists all around the world. Because of things that I am mentioning to you. Diba? Doon ka pa lang pumunta sa, sa Vatican, sawa na yung mata mo eh. At bawat isang um, attraction doon, may kwento. Now, if you are a travel counselor, if you are a travel consultant, can you make a kwento out of that Sistine Chapel um, painting of Michelangelo? And what happened to Michelangelo after that? Did he like the job? Wala siyang magawa, hindi siya makatanggi. Sa poke ang nagutos, makakatanggi ka. Pero isipin mo, paano niyang din drawing yun? E ceiling yun. E syempre, nakahiga. Buong ceiling po ng Sistine Chapel yun. Natapos niya ba? Hindi niya natapos. Merong dumutong. Okay? Merong nagtapos. I don't know if it is Raphael or something like Bianini. Parang sila yung nagtapos, no? Nabulog kasi yung isang mata niya. Siguro natubuan ng maraming paint. Okay? And Michelangelo, to honor him, gilibing siya sa isang mga simbahan. Hahanapin niyo kung nasan yung simbahan. Pinupuntahan na rin yun ng mga turista. Okay? And because Rome is the home or the place or the center of Roman Catholicism, what do you expect? Grandest Cathedral. Diba? Dumo. Milan Dumo. The Vatican Church. The Sistine Chapel and so on and so forth, and dami all over Italy. Okay? May ibang mga simbahan na pwede ko pang umakit sa taas para uh, to get to see the beauty of the place. May bayad. May nagkakakitaan talaga. And arts and history, tuloy po. Okay, tuloy tayo. Okay? So, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci are two Okay, of the best artists that the Renaissance gave us. Not only, we're not only re referring to the Renaissance era when it comes to the production of the arts and, um, and propagation of the, the culture. Ito rin yung panahon na nagkaroon ng great exploration sa mga, ang mga tao sa Europe, okay? Because they were excited to the cuento of Michael Ma Ma Marco Polo. From him, they learned about the existence of China and other places. And so soon, um, Spain and Portugal followed suit. Okay. So uh, they went as far as South America, America, the Philippines, Kasama. And so that's why most of the South American countries speak Spanish. While Brazil speaks Portuguese, pinaghatian nila yan. Okay, the British uh, followed suit by getting India, laki, no? Australia, America, Canada, New Zealand. Ang lalaki, no? hindi naman masyadong gahaman ng Great Britain. And look at Great Britain now. Iba? Yung ibang mga kahali, ano, wala ng mga hari, pero meron pa rin sila. See? well provided because they amass so much treasures okay, controlling these nations in the past. So this great exploration somehow made them to be more powerful, to be one of the greatest and to even control the world somehow. Okay? And look at we now. 
We want to go with their and dad because they were the very first and so on and so forth. Okay, we want to know more. We want to see the, the picture of the queen, the palace of the kings and so on and so forth. Okay, so the Roman, I mean the Renaissance gave us explorations. They gave the grand tour. Remember the grand, the grand tour we discussed in your first year? Dito po yung parang, uh, parang it's a requirement of those students uh, studying to tour around places for them to be able to learn the language, to learn the history and the culture of the places they went to. Because for them, to be able to learn the language is to stay and speak the language of that particular country. That's why for those educated uh, no, no, uh, nobles in the English um, court, it is not common for them to, to, to know other languages. Ibi nga sa kanila talagang linguist eh. Because it is needed during that time, okay? Um, um, Latin as well and so on and so forth. It is believed that pasta was influenced by the Asian noodles as brought by Marco Polo. Wow, that is, that is new. So sabi ni Kuya Marbs, Kuya Marvin Ebron pala is one of the professors, one of my students and became also a professor um, in one of the state universities in Marikina. It is believed that pasta was influenced by the Asian noodles as brought by Marco Polo from his travel in the Silk Road. Wow, maybe. Oo nga. Okay. Kaya lang, iniba nila yung luto. <laughs> hindi, hindi lang nila pinakuluan. Iba, uh, ginawa nila lang spaghetti. <laughs> Thank you for that. So remember that. It is believed. Sino nga ba yung naging kaibigan ni Marco Polo? Was it Genghis Khan or uh, Kublai Khan? Who came first? Genghis or Kublai? Okay. So, anyway. Imagine, hindi ba kinagtatakas? Ang kinuha ng mga Europeans yung takas ng loob nila to sail? The newest... No, model po ng Mercedes was named after Marco Polo. Really? Okay. Ilang seater yung Mercedes na yon. So, you look at this European who was very eager to, to, to explore, to learn, diba? To get. Okay. That's why look at them. Hindi nyo ba naisip, bakit kailangan nila mag-explore? Bakit yung mga, mga Pilipino? Ah, parang stay put ka lang dyan. Sige nga. Ah, Kublai Khan. Oh, oh, he, he he's friends with Kublai Khan. Okay, Kublai Khan was the the grandson of Genghis Khan. Okay, eto yung mga Khan na sobrang parang mga uh, military conquest din sa Asia and some parts of Europe. Grabe. Okay, yung mga malalaking tao na yan. So my question is that why do you think most of the European uh, peop, um, countries was into they were into conquest. They were into getting places. Pero itong, for example, ah, yung Philippines, may nangyayari na rin naman, di ba? Nandiyan na sila, kita mo nga, di ba? Pinatay ni Lapo-Lapo si Magellan. Pero hindi sila umalis ng Pilipinas. Nandiyan lang sila. Okay? Kung meron mang gulo, tribal war lang, camper van po, mother. Ah, camper van. Okay? So... Ako naisip ko yung sagot kanina habang nasa CR. <laughs> Sorry. They need to explore kasi konti lang. <gasps> Very good ka, Nilsson. Oo, talaga. Tama. Konti lang talaga yung mga natural resources nila. I don't need Odette at Chuck. Sino yun? <laughs> Sino yun, Marvin? Kasi diba, look at the Philippines. Anong meron tayo? Kahit saan ka pumunta, may resources tayo. Pumunta ka sa, sa ilog, meron ka makakain, pumunta ka sa dagat, ang dami. Pumunta ka sa kabundukan, sobra. Parang contento na tayo. That's why parang we stay put. Ito na lahat sa atin. We don't need to get out to have more. Samantalang sila, wala silang ganito, etc. Kaya nga na humaling sa atin ng Spanish. Meron tayong mga kasilihan, may mga tayong mga ganyan, may mga asin tayo. Sila kailangan pang pumunta sa ka sa mga kuweba para kumuha ng asin. E tayo nasa dagat lang. Diba? They, we are blessed than them. That's why these things happen to us. Uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons we need to get spices because they need to preserve food. Okay? Um, ano pa? Okay. So we answered that question. Diba? Uh, somehow kasi, sabi nga, kaya nga sabi sa atin ng mga, diba, mga, ng mga Spanish na yan, Mga tamad daw tayo. 
laging tayo nakaupo, nakahiga, etc. Eh kasi nga, kahit hindi naman tayo magtalim ay tumutubo. <laughs> Pero sila kailangan talaga. That's why they, they, they became like that. And we became like this. What is the reason? Because of our geographical location. Oh, meron na naman kinalaman ng geography doon. Kaya paulit-ulit kong sinasabi sa klase ko, geography is the one that shaped the history, the culture of the people. Yes, that is a fact. Because if you're going to study their history and their culture, it has something to do with where the geographical location, where they are. Marvin, sige ni ha ha. Ay, sorry. <laughs> sige ni his, o that gun. <laughs> si Chaka Khan. Through the fire. <laughs> uh, kilala niya ba si Chaka Khan? <laughs> Kung kumanda na through the fire. Nidunaw ko ako ni Marvin. Okay. Parang ayaw pong umundas na yung third. <laughs> okay. To continue the age ex- of exploration. Kaya huwag kayo magtaka, mga bata, kung bakit English ang salita sa US. <laughs> Naging English sila. Ibang ano nga lang, ibang uh, pronunciation lang. Medyo slang sila, mas matigas yung sa, sa British. Sin- bakit na English sa Canada? Most of Canada, Canadians speak English. Bakit English sa, sa Australia and New Zealand? Eh, because they were controlled by the British. It is it happened during the age of exploration. And we also cannot discount the the... The role that the uh, was this Queen Elizabeth did, no, for the English court, the first, uh, not the first because she was, uh, no, the first, the Virgin Queen of England, okay, uh, was she really a virgin? Hindi daw sinasabi ng virgin because um, he was never married, pero he she had several. Um, um, relationship with other male in the English court. So, what did she do? Siya nga yung nagpauso ng grand tour. Siya din ang nagpauso ng edukasyon. Okay? Siya din ang nagpauso ng uh, theater. Siya din ang nag-support kay sino to? Si Shakespeare. Okay? Talaga naman na lahat ng ginawa ni Shakespeare, sinuportahan niya, pinanood. Kaya naman, madaming nagawa si Shakespeare kasi he uh, was actually one of the men of Queen Elizabeth. Okay? And somehow, uh, the English crown became so, uh, what's this, very, during her time, uh, she ruled it very, very good. Okay? She was, she, they were able to defeat the Spanish Armada. Okay? And they were able to control much of the, the whole of the Great Britain. Or the United Kingdom, diba? They, they controlled Scotland, they controlled Wales, okay? And then later in the history, they got the Ireland. Kaya sabi ko sa mga estudyante ko, huwag kayong magtaka bakit pag tinanong anong capital ng England, London, anong capital ng UK, London, anong capital ng Great Britain, London. Tatlong lugar, ma'am, iisang capital, okay? Iisa din ang lugar. Iisa yung London. Bakit? Kasi nga, England was the home of the crown, of the court, okay? So, he get Wales as part of his crown. He get also Scotland, okay? And these three is located in the island of Great Britain. Did you get that? Kaya tinawag the British Isles, yung bahaging iyon ng Western Europe kasi iba't ibang mga isla, yun ang pinakamalaki, Great Britain. Ang sumunod, the island of Ireland. So, sa island of Ireland, nandun po yung Ireland at saka yung Northern Ireland. So, yung yung Great Britain, he also get Northern Ireland to be part of the kingdom. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya, United Kingdom. So, yung apat na yon England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland is called the United Kingdom under the rule now of Queen Elizabeth II. So merong Queen Elizabeth I na nangyari at naghari noong nag na noong 15th century. Okay? But now it is Queen Elizabeth II. The two doors, two doors and the one source. Sinong tatay ni Queen Elizabeth? Ito matutulala ka. 
si King Henry VIII. Isa sa pinakamalibog na hari <laughs> sa kasaysayan ng, uh, ng English court. Bakit? Nakawalo atang asawa yan eh. At pag nag-asawa na, pag nag-asawa na siya sa isang asawa niya, okay, gagawa niya ng issue and he will send them to 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 the saan to? Tower of London. Okay? Pinapapugutan niya ng ulo. Eventually, namatay siya. Sobrang takaw. Nagkaroon siya ng king's gout. Nagkasakit. Okay? Tapos, pugot ulo ng asawa. O, ang pinupugutan talaga sila ng asawa. Okay? Kaya, alam niyo ba yung sakit na king's, king's disease? Okay? King's gout. Gout yun. Karaniwan ng sakit ng mga hari, gout. Masakit yun talaga. Kakatayin kayo nun. Sobrang sakit, hindi ka makakalakad. Bakit? Kasi di ba, mga hari, mahilig sa mga, mga masasarap na pagkain, sa protina, sa karne. Okay, so yun yung isa sa mga nagpapapa, nagpapalala ng karamdaman nila. Karamihan sa kanila namamatay sa ganun. Nasisira yung kidney, hindi nila alam. Sira yung kidney sa sobrang uh, uh, protinang lumok, kinakain at kung ano-ano pa. So tapos, ano pang nangyari, ma'am? After that, nagkaroon ng after ng Renaissance, nagkaroon ng Industrial Revolution. So it was the 18th century. At ang Industrial Revolution nangyari saan? Sa England. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So dito nagsimula na yung paggamit ng mga makinarya. So from manual na pagtatrabaho. So machines na yung ginawa. Ang galing talaga nila, no? Hindi ba kayo talaga nalulula sa galing nila? Pero syempre mas mag- magagaling din yung ibang lahi. Meron silang ibang galing. Na iba sa galing ng mga Europeans. Okay? So na nagsimula na gumamit ng mak- makinarya. Paggawa na gumagamit ng mga machines. Kaya dumadami yung mga supply. Okay, may demands, may supply, di ba? Pero natutuwa ako kasi may mga kwento na may kinalaman d- during the Industrial Revolution. For example, yung kwento ng yung, uh, The Shoemaker and the Elves. Dati kasi, nung wala pang machine, um, ginagawa lang ng kamay ang sapatos. Merong isang matanda, di ba, na magaling daw gumawa ng sapatos. Kaya nakapila yung mga gumagawa sa kanila. Hirap na hirap na yung mag-asawa. Okay? Kaya pati yung... Sa gabi, mga duwende pala yung tumatapos ng mga sapatos na yun. Okay. Pero wala nang ganong kwento ngayon kasi hindi na gawa sa kamay ang mga sapatos. Ginagawa na ng machines na yan. Little was the use for the, for the man to be able to, to, to somehow create a shoe. Okay. Pero syempre, gumagawa pa rin tayo. Okay. Anyway, anong kinalaman ng industrial revolution sa tourism industry? Simple lang. Dahil may industrial revolution, may mga sasakyan na, may mga tren na, dito nagsimula ang pagtatravel ng maraming tao sa malalayang lugar. Okay? At dito nagkaroon ng unti-unti na panahon ng mga tao na mag-travel dahil hindi na sila masyadong pagod. Okay? Napalitan nito yung society. Diba? Dati kasi pati mga bata nagtatrabaho just to be able to uh, to, to give the supply, the demand. Diba? Pero dahil may machines na, Uh, nagkataon na parang kumunti na lang yung needs para magtrabaho, may mga oras ng pahinga, and then kung meron mga oras para magpahinga, nagtatravel na sila. Dito na simura ang tourism industry. After the Industrial Revolution. Okay? Dito tayo magtatapos. <laughs> Ayun. Kasi mag-aalas dis na, uh, Ihina ko. <laughs> Tapos, i- 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 ibabalik natin ng kwento. Marami sana akong ano, uh, um, dapat i-share. Kaya lang, nawawala nga ako sa, sa wish. Wala kasing blackboard. <laughs> anyway, thank you for sharing. So, tandaan nyo, nasa industrial revolution tayo. Uh, <laughs> nagtapos. Thank you, Nilsson. Nasaan ka ba? Nasa work ka ba? Okay. So, pakitandaan nyo, bakit ko discuss to? Kasi lahat ng mga sinabi kong mga lugar, lahat ngayon, ng mga yan, buo pa. Lalo na during the, the ancient time na andun yung um, Lasco and Altamira and New Grange. Those were built 2,000 years ago, pero they are still um, intact. And these are some of the places now that other people would like to see Yeah, it has been visited by so many. 
ako din, ako sa sarili ko gusto kong puntahan kasi di ba, parang nakaka-amaze ang tanda na nito pero buhay na buhay pa. Okay, how come? That's why it's really, um, it's really good to still be alive <laughs> even at this time of pandemic kasi parang, We, there is always something that we look forward to, di ba? Kung anong gusto natin gawin. So, huwag niyong alisin yan sa, sa isip niyo, di ba? Huwag niyong malabas na talaga yung mga puti kong buhok. <laughs> Saka, continue. Thank you, ma'am. Dami po namin natutunan. Yeah, thank you. So, so continue reading. I will be giving you some uh, places that I mentioned kasi ibig sabihin na, na-mention ko na dito, hindi ka nauulitin. <laughs> Parang, Diba? Kasi paulit-ulit ba tayo? Nakaka-three pages po ako ng lecture ko. Oh, good! Sige, magsalita pa kayo dyan. Tignan ko yung mga comments nyo. Anong kulang? Ah, mabilis ba ako? Magulo ba? Kasi, sorry, newbie. This is the only way I could really talk to most of you. That's why. Ay, hihina rin po ako. Ako nga yung hihina eh. <laughs> And thank you for some my former students who uh, uh, also went here. Si Kuya Marvin, si Florence, nakita ko kanina. Si Nilsson talagang nakinig. Clear naman. Ah, clear naman. Okay. I will be sending you what my PowerPoint presentation. Lalagyan ko lang. Hindi pa buo. Euro pa lang to anak, mga anak. Uh, hindi pa natin nadidiscuss yung some cultural traits and dami especially sa sa France um naghahanda ako. No mommy good ang pacing mo. Anything goes. Wala namang sila. Yeah, oo. Salamat. Wala talagang sinunod kung um, kung baga kung ano lang yung nakita ko, kung ano lang yung tatandaan ko. Uh, thanks po. Salamat. Manood ka ulit ha. Meron pa next week tinatapos ko yung iba kong gawain. Interesting din po yung Asia and Af Africa, oo. Sana matapos ko. Um kung hindi pa nagka-pandemic, hindi ako magkakagin ito. Salamat ng marami. Sana ma na marami kayong natutunan. Tapos, kung hindi nyo nakuha yung iba kong mga sinabi, at in your end, it's time for you to research about that. It's very interesting, I'm telling you. Um, don't um, really stop reading. Isang Google nyo lang makikita nyo. Especially yung kay Alexander the Great. Ang dami ko pang natutunan sa kanya nung binasa ko. Grabe pala talaga ang galing ng taong yan. Okay? So, two military strategies ang pinakamagagaling na talagang hinahangaan ko. One is Julius Caesar talaga and another one is Alexander the Great. Kaya lang namatay sila nang hindi inaasahan. Do great people died like that? That is one of the questions in my mind. Okay, so with that, I'm going to end my discussion with you. Thank you and good night. Umihi na kayo. <laughs> Iihi na rin ako. So, mga bata, uh, meron tayong quiz on Friday about the previous lesson. Okay? So, yan. Bye-bye. Thank you. Tulog na. So, naka-almost naka almost two hours time lecture pero hindi pa tapos. Thank you, Ricky, Aaron, Paul, uh, Bianca, Mariel, Paula J, Winona, A Axel, Wendy, Queenie, Amika, Elaine, Kiel. Ano section kayo? Section 2, 2N, Section 2, 3N. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. Hindi ko naman kayo pinipilit, pero magsisend lang ako ng link kung kailan ako mag-live. If you have the time, pwede kayong manood. Kung ayaw nyo, okay lang sa akin. 2-3 N. Thanks, Mommy. Just PM me if you want me to share. Yeah, anak. Next time, continue natin uh, more on Europe and after the Industrial Revolution. Thank you, Naka. Thank you, Marvin. Si Kuya Marvin po, ano ko yan? Chris B. Team ko yan. Contestant ko. Ako yung coach niya. Nananalo kami lagi. Okay? Tantaw ka na, Kuya Marvs. <laughs>
batch batang to mga bata pa talaga <laughs> to 2n and laying to 2n o oh, to oh, 3 sit in ma'am okay lang yun pwede kayo mag sit in anytime kung wala kayong ginagawa makinig lang kayo dami thank you sinend to sa inyo right oo kayo kasi supposedly, pero nakita nyo kasi dahil kayo ay aking mga subscribers. Yung hindi po nagsusubscribe, magsubscribe na. <laughs> Ang dami ko pang ikukwento. Queenie de la Cruz. Wendy, thank you. Wendy, uh, okay. Wow! Thank you, thank you. na pala si Kuya. I'm soon to be a daddy. <laughs> Congrats! To two n Queenie, thank you. Mar Mark Ashley, ikaw ba yung ano, Mark, uh, tawag dito? Irregular na transferi? Antara, iwan kay na pala subscribers, ma'am, pag-giveaway naman. Charot, meron bang ganun? <laughs> ano yung pag-giveaway? Pag-giveaway ng grade? <laughs> Bigyan kita, ilan gusto mo. Ready ako kanina, oh, mag-lecture sana pag gising ko. Tapos nakita ko sa group chat, walang pasok kasi daw may bagyo. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi nga ako maalis, di ba? Online lang, wala pong pasok. Give away po ng uno. Karen, thank you po, ma'am. Kamusta si Kuya? Christina Utana, thank you. Nag-subscribe na ba kayo sa akin? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sabihin nyo sa iba nyo mga tourism students na kakilala, if they wish to learn more, Nax, parang ang galing ko. <laughs> Listen to my lecture. Yah, Kim Tae-yong. Huwag <laughs> kang magpanggap. Ang layo. <laughs> Saan ka galing na school? Sabi mo na, na ano mo na yung subject na to na kuha mo na. Ayan. Thank you, Alisa. Thank you too for being here and for listening. Mm -mm. Sige. Ano pa gusto nyo sabihin? Ano yung gusto nyo yung topic na pag-usapan natin next? Ililista ko. Baka meron kayong suggestion. Dami kong libro na pwedeng ikwento sa inyo. Pag-giveaway po. Uy, mga anak, tulungan natin yung estudyante na nakita niyo yung picture na pinost. Ay, hindi ko kayo friend pala. Nag-post ako ng picture ng bahay niya na nasira. Tapos, alam mo ang nakita ko talaga doon agad? Yung world map. Doon naka sa, ano, sa dingding. Na, estudyante ko siya ngayon. 2-3 and ba yun? 2-3. May world map sa dingding yun din. Medyo sira lang pero buo pa. Kawawa naman siya. Tulungan natin. Oy, mag may map exam na kayo ng Europe. Alam niyo ba yon? Ayun, si Nico J. Montiano. Kawawa naman. Tulungan natin, please. Wala silang bubong. May mapa siya pero wala siyang bubong. Paano yun? Do something about it second year. Pero magpo-post. Nag-post na ako tapos marami nang nag-share. Palagay ko marami nang magbibigay sa kanya. Sana, sana maraming matumulong sa kanya. Di ba? Kayo. Ma'am, stories about Greek mythology. Ah, okay. Stories about Greek mythology. Sige, ilista natin yan. Ano pa? Meron pala akong ID ko. Tomorrow we rain so I'll follow the sun. Gagawin ko yung PowerPoint nun na, tapos iaano ko din sa, sa YouTube para makita nyo. Kung, oh, Norse mythology. Gusto mo ngayon na? <laughs> Greek and Norse mythology. Ang galing ko naman. Ops, disclaimer. I am not 
uh, ano to? A master in European history, ha? disclaimer yun na parang please lang. I just love to read, that's it. Sige, ano pang gusto nyo natin pag-aralan next time? Greek mythology, wall pen, uh, back next meeting, sige yan, bakit daw may Brexit? Sige anak, assignment ko yan sa inyo. Bakit may European Union? World War II, ma'am. Oh, kasama yan sa topic natin, anak. Uh, Greek mythology. Next natin yan. Greek mythology. Norse mythology. Uh, World War II. European Union. Bakit may Brexit? Yeah, oo. Nabanggit ko na kill si, si Nico J. Uh, napost ko na rin. Mas marami nang nag-repost. Sige, anak. I want it. Si, at Google. Google Drive. Ilandamontansis at gmail.com Ma'am, more movie suggestion po about Europe. Ah, you want me to tell you more movie suggestions about Europe? Bakit nag-break ang Yugoslavia? Okay. Marbs, oh, ang dami nilang request into five. Saka Czechoslo Czechoslovakia, isama mo na dun, anak. Ah, pagdating natin yan ng ano, Marvin, ng American, ano, American continent. Mm -mm. So, if not this weekend, I'm going to uh, give some time for me to research about these things and then we'll have this next meeting, okay? Or next weekend. Tapos, mag-research din kayo. Marvin, nandun daw mga European uh, movie na pwede Ah, panoorin nyo yung ano, um, um, sino nga to? Si Mel Gibson, The Braveheart, okay? That is the story about the English crown uh, trying to take Scotland, okay? The Braveheart. Yan, panoorin nyo, ang ganda. Medyo sasabi, kasi baka sabihin nyo boring, kasi hindi, ma matutuwa kayo. Gladiator din panoorin yung gladiator. Japanese. Pag, anak, pag pumunta na tayo sa Asia yon hindi pa tayo, na, Europe pa tayo, Europe. Asama talaga yon Uy, ibig bang the darkest hour? Ibig sabihin nga, nagiging interested na kayo sa history? Sige, I will take this. Uh, all your um, suggestions next meeting, um, next, ano, next time. What do you mean, heal the darkest hour? What is that? Wala na? Wala na kayong suggestion? O di ba, bay na? 10 o'clock. So, isang oras tayo. Ay, hindi. 8 to 9. <gasps> Two hours tayo. Sige. Uh, message nyo lang ako kung ano yung gusto nyong kwento. I will make a story out of it. Okay? So, I'll be your Lola Bakshang and it will tell you stories about the world history. Good night. Bye-bye. Ingat kayo. I will be ending this stream na. Paano ba i-end? Are you sure you want to end your stream?
Oo. Oh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Initiation E. Amy. Um, uh, some parts of Europe lang. Oo, kasama. Ano bang i-exam? Yung discussion natin last time about ocean, about ganyan-ganyan. Babay po, babay. <laughs> babay na. Thank you. <laughs> Nagagawin pa ako. <laughs> Mag-check pa ako ng mga PC, saka ng mga gawain niya. Dami. Babay, Ricky. Babay. Thank you. Thank you, Hill, Aaron, Mariel. Yung last meeting, saka itetest ko lang how much yung, you know about European map. See you when I see you. Sana magkita-kita na tayo. Bye-bye. I'm going to end this now, talaga, promise. Yes. Yes. <sighs>